good to be back with you. One of the first questions people have to answer when they start studying statics is how to solve for the reaction forces on a beam, particularly if that beam is loaded asymmetrically. That means if the load's not in the center. All right, so let's, let's try that. This is a, uh, not too hard to do, and it's especially easy if you follow the solution process for all statics problems, and I'll tell you about that in a second, okay? So let's say this is a pinned beam. Now, pinned means the ends are free to rotate, okay? Now, we draw this assuming there's this little triangular base with a pin on it so the beam can rotate. Well, how often do you actually see those? Well, maybe more than you think. If you, you'll see these on road bridges. When you drive under them on the highway, you'll actually see things that look surprisingly like that. Um, but it could be like a, 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 a floor joist just propped up on, on its ends. That still counts as a pinned beam. So let's say we have a beam. And let's say it's three meters long, okay? And let's say that there is a graying professor standing on it. And that graying professor weighs 900 newtons. And let's put the, the center of his load at uh, one meter from the end of the beam. So it's two meters there, one meter there. I don't quite have it to scale, but you get the idea. And I gotta call these n something, so I'll call that a, and I'll call this b. All right. So given that, the solution is find the reaction force at a and the reaction force at b. Okay. So obviously, when you're standing on the beam, there had the, the there's a part of the the weight is being supported over here, and part is being over here. Since the load is not in the center, it makes sense that those two wouldn't be the same. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw a working diagram, which we just did. Okay. Next, then I'll get, get out of your way here in a second. Then we're going to draw a free body diagram, which I'm going to do up here. We're going to write out the equations of equilibrium. Okay, that's kind of a 50 cent way of saying some of the forces equal zero, some of the moments equal zero. That's really what this means. And the last one is that we're going to solve those equations to find something we need. So we've already got that one. So let's draw a free body diagram. Okay, free body diagram is a simplified version of that. It's got all the, 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 the parts that are necessary but with none of the other uh, complications. So it's, it's a little more conceptual. So here's what we've got. And this free body diagram is pretty easy. There's force up at B, force up at A, and the force down here from the load. The professor standing on it. We've got to have a coordinate system. Okay. Now you can pick any coordinate system you want. Whatever one you pick, you probably want to use the same one most of the time. I use this one most of the time, unless I've got a pretty good reason not to. You know, if, if some, something about the problem is at an angle or something, I'll change it. But if you use the same coordinate system all the time, you tend to mess up less. So that's good. So now we've got a free body diagram. That's good. So we've got this over here. So that's, let's see, if that's step one, that's step here. That's step one. That's step two. Step three is we're going to write out our equations of motion. Okay. Now you remember, statics doesn't have a lot of theory to it, okay? The, the theory as explained to me by a, a great professor here at Purdue was some of the forces equal zero, some of the moments equal zero, you can't push a rope. Everything else is detail, okay? So let's, let's do this. Let's say the sum of the forces in the y direction equals zero. We don't have any forces in the x direction, but if we did, that we, we would have another equation here. So let's see, Fa is positive plus F B minus 900 Newtons, and that's zero. Now, I drew those forces up because it's pretty obvious they have to be vertical or else the beam would be moving. If you guess wrong, if you guess the wrong directions for F A and F B, don't sweat it. The math will take care of you and it'll give you a negative number for a force. That's math's way of telling you that you drew the force in the, in the opposite direction that it's actually going. So that's okay. If you guess wrong, math will take care of you. Assuming you do it right. Now, I gotta sum the moments about somewhere. Well, 
it doesn't really matter where. The, the equation is valid no matter where I sum the moments, so it's good to sum the moments in a, in a location that makes the uh, math as simple as possible, makes the resulting equation as simple as possible. Well, let's, let's solve it at A. Like I say, if you want to pick something else, go ahead. It'll, it'll be fine. Um, but that has to be zero. Now, the moment about A, remember about that point there, this, this, this uh, 900 Newton load is going to make a moment in the clockwise direction. Well, that's against this coordinate system, a positive co assumed coordinate system. So that's going to be a negative moment. So I've got minus, and it's going to be a Newton meter. So 900 Newtons times, that's going to be 2 meters right there. If that's 1, that must be 2. Times 2, how about if I do an x there, the times there. Um, and then I've got this uh, moment up here. Now the, the moment due to the force at B, back in the frame, due to the force uh, at B is positive, because the moment it creates about point A is counterclockwise, just as the, the positive sign convention says. So I'm going to say that uh, was 3 meters times FB. I don't know what FB is yet. But look at what I got here. I got one equation and one unknown. So solving for FB isn't going to be very hard. So okay, so we did number three. Last thing, number four. Okay, last thing is to solve our equations of equilibrium. And we've got working diagram, free body diagram, equations of equilibrium, and then solve. And this is the same for every statics problem. They all follow this process. Okay. Um, so let's solve this one first, since that's easier. Let's see, if I say, yeah, let's see. If I write that as eight, uh, 1,800 Newton meters, 100 Newton meters equals 3 meters times FB. I guess I gotta make, I'm going to make it an X there. i got to make it an X there. Okay, and that's FB. Ah, looks terrible, but there you go. There's FB. Well, I divide through by 3 meters, and I'm going to get 600 newtons. Because remember, units cancel out just like numbers cancel out. That, that turns into 600. All right, and I'm left with newtons. Okay, does it make sense that the load at B, would, the re reaction force at B would be higher than the reaction force at A? Yeah, it does, because I mean, if you're standing closer to that end, it makes sense that this end would have to bear a greater portion of your load than that does. Okay, so we got that. Last thing to do is plug FB into that equation right there, and we'll find that FA is 300 newtons. Okay, so there's your two solutions. There's the last step. Now, just to just double check. When I add up those two numbers, I probably should here, I'll write this here. This will appeal to my sense of symmetry here. Oops, yeah, that's right. Okay, there you go. Um, does it make sense that that number plus that number is 900? Well, yes, it does, because that's the load. Now, notice I didn't put a weight, or I didn't attach a weight to this beam. I didn't, I'm assuming the weight, the beam is so light that it does, it's a, uh, weight of the beam is small compared to the weight of the person standing on it. Okay? Well, maybe that's true, maybe it isn't. If it isn't, and the beam is uniform, that is, it's the same everywhere, you can add another weight in the middle there to account for the weight of the beam and solve again. All right? So there you go. We've drawn a working diagram, drawn a free body diagram, written out the equations of motion, and solved them. There you go. I hope this helps, and I'll see you next time.